Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to B Sides Las Vegas. Uh, this talk is about the telenovela of Latin America banking trojans, a dramatic story of cybercrime. And here we have Sibeli, who's going to present the talk. Uh, a few announcements before we begin. Uh, we would like to thank our sponsors, especially our diamond sponsor Adobe and our gold sponsors Prisma Cloud, Blue Cat, Toyota. It's with their support, along with other sponsors, donors, and volunteers that make this event possible. These talks are being streamed live, and as a courtesy to our speakers and audience, we ask you to check to make sure that your cell phones are on silent mode. If you have any questions, please use the audience microphone so that YouTube can hear you as well. And with that, let's get started. Please welcome Sibeli. Hey everyone, thank you for waiting my little technical problems, you know, that's all the time actually. Uh, first, I know I didn't born in the US, so my English is not perfect, but just okay. If you don't understand, just raise your hands or let it go. If I say some weird words, please, you can correct me. I don't care, really. It's, sometimes it's good to learn. And that's it. Uh, someone here knows something about uh, banking trojans from Latin America? A little bit? Okay, if you're not, that's okay. Um, so, it's about uh, a telenovela because Latin America is very known about telenovelas and they are very dramatic and also as are cyber criminals for this, this name. So, who I am? I'm, I used to say I, I'm a mix of um, gossip girl from our land with fortune, for, fortune, for, uh, teller, fortune teller because I work with cyber threat intelligence. So, I have to know everything what's going on in our land and all the disgraces and try to see, oh, what's going on in the future. Basically, this is what I do. And for over 10 years, I've been working, especially with cybersecurity and privacy in Brazil and some organizations in Brazil, all around the world, like Mozilla and Tor Project. Basically, this is what I do right now. Work with, I'm a gossip girl. This is a real picture of me in Mexico. I'm not from Mexico, but it's in Mexico and Dia de los Muertos. So I like it. So this is me. And I have cats. I love cats, as you see before. And I love tofu because I'm almost vegan. Not all because I love chocolate. It's hard to know this. You know that. And I like sprink uh, sprinkling water, sparkling water. And basically it's this. So what we're gonna talk. See, I have many gifts. It's super cool. Thank you. And what we're gonna talk about. The, uh, what are we talking about? Uh, the Board of Brazilian Cyber Cream. I not talk about all the Latin America, you know, threat landscape because I don't know. I, it's quite similar. So we, you understand, if you understand that Brazilian one is kind of similar than the rest of Latin America and about the common futures about uh, of these mowers and banking trojan families and what's next or why this happened or let's see if it's possible to stop them or no 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 it's, it's impossible even it's very peculiar you know mowers so What's talk about, you know? Oh, back, 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 back. Uh, well, right now in times of AI, we have like, uh, things like chat GPT or similar chat GPT, uh, writing malwares and, you know, can you believe if I tell you, if well, most of banking Trojans, malwares in Brazil and Latin America is to desktop, they work in desktop much more. They write this kind of more, more to desktop than to, um, smartphones because yeah it is easier you know to bypass some securities in desktop especially for people not so saving cyber security or whatever and for other people and i'm gonna talk about this specific issue but from the strategic cyber threat intelligence i'm not a malware analyst so please don't ask super hard questions because I can't say, I can't answer, but from a strategic point of view, I can do this. Um, but well, what is a strategic point of view? It's basically this. Um, I see everything is what's going on for this gossip go from our land, it's not just one tree, I see the whole forest, you know, all the disgraces, you know, in, you know, disgraces that's going on in our land is a very sweet name I gave for 
this what happened in cybercrime, I think skewed it. And I talk about more general, not just one specific, you know, thing. Sorry, sometimes I forget the words in English, and I know much more words in Portuguese than English, so sometimes lack some words, sorry, but you can help me, please, you can, oh, these words you wanna say, please. So, um, the born of Brazilian cybercrime. Mm, well, first of all, I must be, be thinking why I talk about malwares in desktop, not in mobiles. Well, as incredible it may seem, this, they are widely used in make, to make bank trojans, you know, really, really widely used. Uh, everybody has a mobile, you know, even two, three mobiles. They, people, especially in Latin America, they have many mobiles with, uh, with, uh, with international connection, international, internet connection, but not a desktop or a computer. So everybody has a, some kind of way to be connected. But some taxes, uh, we have to pay in desktop, only desktop. I don't know why it's weird, or you go to the bank. So what the people do, they pay in the, in the desktop, especially companies you know small companies they have to pay this government taxes there so this is a big surface you know to attack really big so bank trojans are developed for desktop because it's a little bit less complicated than to desktop to mobile because mobile you have to say oh please uh, accept the uh, accessibility you know you have to unlock accessibility for you have to click 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 people say oh do i yeah, people sometimes are dumb and they accept, but and the computer in desktops easier, you know, just okay, happens is there and that's it. So, uh, of course, we have many, many, many mowers that attacks uh, smartphones, especially Android. Like, for example, I love these names, it's so unique. Zumanek, Amar Amavaldo, Zanubis, they are really weird names but fun and this last one Zanubs they attacked all Latin America except Brazil no wasn't me who write this because I can't do this but it's a very cool name so uh, Brazilian threat landscape in cybercrime let's talk talk about a bit about the history I have a bachelor degree in history so you you learn about history of Brazilian cybercrime when internet, you know, commercial internet started like night, middle of 90s, you know, people used to walk uh, Brazilian underground race, you know, born. And until like 2000, people, this forums, kind of forums, not like Fortune or other forums, they talk uh, only in IRC. I think everybody remember, you know, to talk in IRC. No, very simple, very not so friendly user, not so many GIFs or emojis or images. So everybody was there and talking and talking. Um, and then, okay, uh, that, is what, that was a place to learn. People was learning how to, how to, you know, in cybersecurity because that, back that time is frameworks i don't know if exists some or was very expensive or i don't know and you have to learn to speak in english come on we are from latin america it's not our language we i speak portuguese not even spanish i can't speak spanish but the rest of latin america speaks spanish and everybody knows it's our very poor countries mostly so not everyone can speak english because it's expensive now it's easy we have youtube but before no you have to pay like a teacher to learn so was few people was there oh let's learn you know and was a exchange learn exchange and financial risk start to be very low you know financial return was high and risk are low basically is this when everything starts i don't know how to compare here in us i have no idea because I never live here, so I don't know this. But basically, the emergence, the emergence of Brazilian underground started in the mid of 90s until early 2000 IRC. Limit, limited resources to, know, to learn, knowledge exchange, to cybercrime. A any platform can be considered a forum in Brazil. It's not like a bridge forum or any of these forums, you know? 
you have to be invited or you have to pay to be there and oh come on i'm selling some bank compromises uh, credentials or mowers or something as a service no in brazil no everything is can be a platform like whatsapp or facebook or telegram especially telegram um given this resource limitation we had back time uh the thing how we learn how like to attack something from the facement yeah it's easy it's not that wow super hacker but they want to know how to do this so the facement was considered a learning experience you know in absence of this frameworks however you know to educational purpose like educational this became a cyber crime was just a stone throw away it was super hmm. So it's easy to do this, maybe, maybe not. And these guys start, usually guys, I know I'm a woman, but usually it was guys, one or two women, or non-women, start saying, hmm, oh, I have some, I'm a massive credit card numbers here because I don't know here, please let me know. Um, companies say, oh, I will send you a credit card. I, but I didn't ask, but yes, I send you. I don't know, this happens in the US or happened? Oh, just sending you. But what happened? Oh, the mailman say, oh, you keep this or keep that, or the person received that. Oh, I, yeah, discard. You know, so it's easy. Or someone, robber, you know, the mailman. So they have a huge, you know, numbers of credit cards and sell and spend in the name of the others. So pff, easy. And then besides carding, we have, um, what, what else? Uh, so this discussion also was organized by topic. Well, now today we organize like selling or buying or something like this. It's very organized. Back then, no. So the cyber crime scene migrate to IRC to Orkut. Do you remember Orkut? Yes, it's like the grandpa of Facebook or grandpa of Instagram. They went to them, migrate to them, and start to selling products and hacking services. And then they headed to Facebook groups, the closed ones. And then the trust among these criminals shaken, you know, because some um, information starts to leak, these conversations, and this fraud, fraud, sorry, fraudsters? Yeah, fraudsters, okay. So, hmm, I'm not liking this. So what happened? So unlike the Russians, or the Brazilian people and Latin American general use cybercrime, not, don't use underground, underground uh, forums. They use like surface forums. It's not a forum at all. It's WhatsApp, come on, it's so easy. Facebook, sometimes Instagram, no? So that's it. What, where it's easier, we go. We know, I don't, that people go. So Brazil, and Brazilian cyber crimes are very, quite nationalist. They operate much more in Brazil, in our territory, or even Latin, Latin American people operate in their country and then abroad. Some except, exceptions, of course, because for this I talk about destructions, they are spreading all around the world. And they don't, they are not afraid to change their TTPs because, oh, it's not working. Okay, let's change. Let's change here, let's change there. Where money is easy, they are going. So, Mm, sorry, I'm uh, kind of, you know, nervous, so I blah, 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 mixing things. Everybody's okay with uh, what I'm saying? It's okay? Okay, please. If it's weird, say, please, you better stop. Say again. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, some common features uh, among Latin, Latin America mowers. First, Latin America is huge. It's not just one country. I don't know, some American people don't know this, but we have like, 20 countries, 14 territories, including Mexico, Central Mexico, here, next to US, Central America, South America, and Caribbean. So we have a lot of countries, and Brazil is the only one who speaks Portuguese. The area are different. I know. Good. So all countries are different than others. When we read some reports, wrote, wrote wrote by someone from North, Global North are very biased, you know, things like everybody's the same, like Peru is like Mexico or everyone is Mexican is, 
no. So, uh, complete different cultures, complete different everything. Even the way they talk is different, you know, super different. But um, something we have in common, we don't boast uh, APTs, you know, we don't have APTs in Latin America so far because nah, there is no reason for this. So, or this, uh, or environment is very unique for this kind of mowers, bank mowers, or some kind of fraud, because the cyber criminals are very persistent. We have uh, drug cartels, you know, uh, recruiting people, you know, young people to work with cyber criminal because come on, if I'm not selling drugs abroad is hard, how we can get money? So we are recruiting people in Brazil. We have large gangs, you know, criminal gangs that are recruiting. You know, oh, I think you you can you know, work with computers because it's always someone who works with computers. They don't know what they do, but is a computer person. So they recruiting them. It's weird. So please, sorry, people who born in the U.S. but in America is all this. Well, some more attributes. Uh, even with this different social. Uh, Difference between, among us, uh, something are very common, like some word attributes. Uh, they try to reach the larger number of victims, everyone, everywhere. We don't, not just a specific one or one bank or one person, just wow, you know, what, uh, I forget the word in English, okay. Whatever, but the quality of what the malware is not so good, you know, it's just okay. Ah. Thank God they speak very loud. Now it's better? Yeah. Come on, people, what did they say before? Oh, then, okay, the more, <laughs> the mowers, you know, written in Latin America is not, wow, what a mower. It's just, they work. This is the thing, they work. This is very important, just work. They reach a, lot, a big number of victims and the operators use the full potential of the mowers, not just, I use this time and yeah, discarded. No, they use it again and again and again. Uh, if it's working, that's good. If it's not working, yeah, okay, we try. We can modify a little bit, just a little bit, you know. It's not like this um, mower, mower as a service, you know. You buy in the shelf mower. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm again, nervous, forgetting words. But please, if you're not understand following my, what I'm thinking, Please, please let me know, you know. So the operators use the mower to, for its full potential and when it's not running out of capabilities, they just make some minor technical adjustment, just enough to keep it running. This is very, very, very common in Latin America. Mostly are riding in Delphi, even old, you know, old, um, not the new version of Delphi, but old ones. Uh, was a lot of social engineering because sometimes it's easy. So just click here. Oh, you get some something for free. I do this. I like free things. So I will give this. So click. Okay. I, if I do this, can you picture my mom or someone that whatever? So they do this. And the thing is with social engineering is persuade someone to do something. Well, I think everybody knows here, know how it works. So to trick people is kind of easy, you know, especially with free things or free money, like this bet, you know, oh, you can try here and get triple of money. You can get your bet like $1 and get 10,000. It's super easy to trick people. And um, what else they use? Um, they, uh, they make a pop-up showing the screen, you know, to switch to the data. It's a fake pop-up, you know, it's an overlay screen. So the people, oh, what's this? I have to put my credentials here. Okay, but it's fake. Even if the mouse don't, don't move, they use this. And they use a lot of, even try um, in the motto to, to do this, you know, to trick people usually is like, oh, we have update. Oh, you have to update your computer right now. You have update your a uh, bank platform right now, it's very important. Everything is super urgent. Oh, it has to be now, now. And people insert their credentials, they credit card numbers and uh, passwords and everything. Uh, with this pop-up screen, they issue data, and 
Anyway, this is very regular, but this is the the thing what happened in Latin America. Not not much different than this because they. It's not lazy, but uh, why do I have to work so much if I can get money just doing this, the simple thing I can? And then they write multiple vari variant. How can I pronounce this? Variant? Okay, cool. With minor mod modifications, you know, so they are developed simultaneously. It's not just one, try one. I develop one and sell, and then it's not working. I try again. No, they develop many, many lots, and that's it. And threat actors disseminate this variant all around, and this is very effective. Basically, you know, the the flow shot or a chain attack like this, like collect information about the machine, you know, send notification, scan active windows, and if found a target window, okay, let's go. If not, oh, let's come back. And then the communication with the commander uh, with CC and display fake pop-up windows. This is the base of Latin American Trojans works, basically are these. And something very, very interesting. More families share many, many functions, like Grandorero, Ozaban. As I say, it's very funny names, even for me. This doesn't mean anything, these words. It's just words. Grandorero, Ozaban, every, uh, who found out this, every company give a name. So this is lots of name. Uh, like, for example, Ozaban, this threat uh, often abuse cloud services to download the second stage of payload and, and Google Docs to retrieve the C2 configuration. And under one Casbanero, uh, they deliver a malware loader, call it bat loader, and a rat. That the name is very good, aka Ave Maria. It's like praying, Ave Maria, you know, that's very Catholic praying. And for example, through the malware execution, they use algorithms to decrypt, you know, the strings. But these algorithms, algorithms, parses the hexadecimal strings and use a chain of char operation, you know, this key to previous byte of the string. This happens. And where they come from? This book. Someone wrote this book and this this family is just copy and paste to use. See, it's in everywhere. Yeah, it's funny, right? You are laughing, it's funny, but works a lot. Really, really works. It's stupid what works. This is the point of my, my talk, you know? This works. Basically, they do the same. They are different, but they are the same, you know? It's this. It don't, don't think I like, oh, or, or cyber criminals are bad. No, they are super cool, but they don't need to work too much to get money. Just, yeah, let's do it. Um, I don't know if you are, some people are aware of Mafalda, you know, is a comic book, you know, this little girl, super cute little girl. Of course, she's not talk about droppers originally, but it's like the mowers as a service, you know, of the shelf mowers. Oh, I want you a dropper, a bank trojan, and this and that, and another two and that, and some more. Okay, this is for you. So it's very common, you know, to attract actors to buy this kind of mowers, aka mowers as a service, something more as a service is a big business right now, and adjusted to execute it. For example, Emotet is, everyone knows Emotet is huge, is big, and uh, even Homeland Department classified as the most devastating mower because they have this warmable feature, so it's bad. But um, that's it. They buy and use as you could. But he, here, sorry, gringos, this is not happening in you know, Latin America because every little thing you say, oh, it is not to work. Uh, I'm not working this anymore, I buy a new one. But not us, not, we change everything, you know? Little adjustment, as I said before, and let's try again and again and again. It's like, you know, your old clothes you give for your younger siblings and then the other siblings and to, cousin, to the cousins, you know, and to that turn a rack and this uh, unusable is the same with our mowers. Basically it's this. So, Let's go to the more 
technical part. Latin America Banking Trojans collect information about the victim's machine. This usually consists of computer name, username, unique identifier, and indications whether the security or banking protection software is, are installed. You know, uh, the persistent usually is through Windows registry. Yeah, the, but they don't use much, you know, the first 10 stage. It's, they use, but it's not, it's rare, you know, it's not so, why, why? we can go jump, you know. But the evasion uh, part, you know, they use a lot of low bings, defense evasion, and you can check the low bing, uh, low bus project, you know, to see how they can use the low bings in different ways, very creative ways. So you can check there. And this technique, DL, DLL side loading, they use a lot. This is the most used thing. Um, well, they capture um, credentials, data, super in the browser. Uh, Astaroth and Mispadu, their families I will talk about later, they capture browser cooks. This is very specific for these malwares. And the screen overlay, this was taken, you know, from one of our uh, the guy I used to work, he's a malware analyst, not me. He took this, this print, you know, the real campaign that was running, this overlay screen. So the, the cyber criminal is trying to, you know, lure this guy. And the final infection of chain, the malware mentioned all the mentions here, they place this overlay screen. This is the thing they do, you know, the cyber criminal then have this access, remote access to the computer in order to perform bank transactions. And this overlay prevents the user to see or to touch in anything else, you know, that's it. You know, they just can see this picture, they can change other screen or move the mouse or something like this. They lose all the control of the computer. Now, some Latin America banking Trojans. Yes, they are weird, like this family, very nice family. No. So let's dive a little bit into some other families. Okay, Casbanero. This word doesn't mean anything at all, at all. This is uh, the disinfection, it's infection chain. No, it starts with, usually with um, uh, email, you know, to, uh, they send a URL, uh, malicious. Can you read this or choose more? I can't. Oh, good. <laughs> you can read for everybody, please. Oh, I can read from here. It's, I'm not using my glasses. Please, can you do this? Help us. Oh, it's in Portuguese. Sorry. No, you can't. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but uh, with the, this, you know, you can picture what how it works, right? Or no? Can I explain? Yeah, yeah what? Yeah, I understand. Oh, yes, please explain everything. <laughs> well, wow, I don't know what happened here, but it's yellow, My the letters here. I can read in yellow because it's with white. Um, they take account from, you know, financial institutions, even cryptocurrencies as well. And they screen the same as explained before, what they do, this malware is obfuscate code, encrypt uh, strings and anti-analysis protection like anti-VM and anti-debugger functions. Uh, they have this malicious DLL indicating the intrusion institution target, you know, oh, now I see what's an institution. So they, the, the threats are encrypted in a custom algorithm to be used by Latin American Trojans. They do what the malware do, you know, nothing different. And they, one thing different in this family is that they can monitor Bitcoin wallet, they copy to the wallet and they replace with their addresses so they can do everything. Okay, now Miss Padu. Miss Padu has been linked for, with many spam com campaigns targeting especially Bolivia, Chile, Mexico, Peru and Portugal. One of their main strategies is to compromise legitimate websites searching for vulnerable versions, especially from WordPress, to turn them into their C2 to spread the malware from there. So, cool, nice. They try to filter this, uh, filter out by country to, to the country they wish, you know, to attack. They drop in different types of malware by, based on the country they are infected. So in Brazil it's one, and it's the same but different, as I said before, but um, they use, here, the infection chain. 
Oh, sorry, this is in Portuguese as well, but sorry. I, I forgot to translate. But is this, if someone would like to read a lot. See, si, you can speak in Spanish as well, please. <laughs> so, Miss Pado is a multi-stage infection strategist because they split the malicious techniques and two different components, making it harder to detect. It's super hard because they split. And then the adversary hide the malware inside a fake certification, so it's harder to detect. And they misuse cert, cert U2, you know, because it's a window, legitimate Windows program. And then they decode and execute the bank intrusion. So one of the com campaigns they run in uh, 2019, in, especially in Chile, to distribute uh, this malware through Facebook ads was that's like faking uh, McDonald's, you know, discounts happens a lot. So many, 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 many people, you know, fall into this malware. And some, well, an important feature of this malware process that because the Trojan and the command and control server has not changed since the first attacks, even though it works, not changed, you know, the, the C2, but it's still running. Um, most recently, this lovely family, backed by unpopular demand, they tried to uh, was identified twenty different different campaigns, like from last uh, few end of two thousand twenty-two to now. Uh, folks from Metabase Q from Mexico identified these campaigns. They using like banking trojans, spent all around. Me caught you. Mecocho is a very interesting, very active in Brazil. There are very long infection chain, really, really, really long. This is very simplified. You can find this, um, that is in English. This is in English, actually, because I, I, when I wrote this report for the previous company I work, was in English, so now you can see. No, sorry, it's in Portuguese again, sorry. Oh my God, I, I read some like fishing URL, but can you understand? Can you understand? Yes, no, yeah. yeah, kind of. Cool. What, what's content? Yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so very active in Brazil, Chile, Peru, and Mexico. Uh, starting 20, 2020, uh, start to target now, like three years ago, they start to target uh, countries in Europe and Spain, Italy, Portugal. Um, the, the family use a custom encryption, the abuse low beings as well. And they use a lot of this technique, name it binary padding, super cool. Lots of shit inside that, you know, so it's hard. And they use the scheduled tasks to start infection, uh, infection stage as well uh, and execute a, a specific file, you know, but never, never, never use persistent. This is, this is very unique, you know, very long um, infection chain. Don't use persistent because it's rare, but happens a lot. And they, uh, they're TTPs, very long list of TTPs. Mecacho, it, um, this is a this scheduled task to start an infection stage. In the next minute, they execute a specific file, and that's it. Super cool. <laughs> and Astaroth, this is my favorite, because he, everything is automated there. Uh, they just automate everything. Um, the, the process is automated, unlike the other malwares. They use many hum, human parts, so humans uh, can fail, but auto, if you automate it, it's, more difficult to do this. So each phishing they send in mail phishing is unique, a uh, unique compilation of malware. So this is basically almost impossible to detect them by rash and difficult to create a uh, yara, a uh, yara, yara, I say in English, yara, yara rules because each email is different. So they spend like a million emails per day. It's a lot of mail, you know, all of their structure, uh, it's based on cloud and they, they have their own domains. Even the third party services they, they have, they protect against the DOS attack. So very hard to remove this guy. So this is more modern malware we have, Astaroth. And come on, one million spent per day is a lot. 
the campaigns are massive, very generic, you know, the campaigns like, oh, click here to access your Google Drive or DocuSign or something like this. The infection chain is easier. Again, in English, sorry guys, so, so sorry, but if you want, I can translate for you and send, sorry, uh, maybe it's easy. Uh, this more exploits uh, websites vulnerable to cross-site scripting, you know, attacks and deliver to deliver the initial payloads. And then here, like, uh, the efficient is very, yes, I know this is in Portuguese, I know because this is the campaign, is in Portuguese, but you can see, you know, DocuSign, uh, download, your, download your document here, this and that. They link the vitamin, like Google Drive, DocuSign, blah, blah, blah. And something very, very cool. They are very hungry. They steal website sessions. I love this one, the Cookie Monsters. And, and now what? So, as I say, they are very simple, super simple, but work a lot. And why this more works? Because uh, the threat landscape in Latin America and in Brazil they, uh, is very specific. We have despite everybody is connected to internet, they are not so savvy in how to protect themselves. I know here as well, like in US, I know this, but people, oh, it's a weird link. Okay, let me click. Uh, I want to download a game or a VPN. They do this a lot because in Brazil or in Latin America, it's super expensive, you know? For example, to buy $1, I spend five reais. So everything's super expensive. What the people do, they crack. They just download, you know, they are pirates. For this, is, this malware happens mostly, you know. Oh, let me find some trick to my game. And it happens a lot. Uh, softwares, VPNs, and they go to W's place like, what's this? Oh, this look like X video, but it's like XX video. Oh, I go there. So it's super easy to download these malware. And, but on the other hand, the adversaries, they are kind of lazy, not lazy, but okay, I can do this with a little effort. And they have a, a limited patient, you know, they just just deliver, you know, the threat and change a little and modify a little, as I said before, like for to older sibling, to younger, to the cousin, to blah, 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 blah. And a lot of social engineer, but these guys don't have very uh, hard technical skills. They are super shallow, you know, really shallow. They buy it and modify a little, but in, they not even think about their OPSEC. So it's easy to, to spot them. So why they are not in jail? Because mostly in Latin America, they, this kind of guys don't go to jail. We are trying this very hard, you know, for this we have jobs forever, cybersecurity people. And Brazil right now is, uh, they signed this Budapest Convention, that means uh, international cooperation among the countries everywhere. So it'd be easier to arrest these guys. But even if they are arrest, they, we are, other ones will show up and again and again, a lot of problems. And well, last year the cops, Kaspersky threat report said that Brazil generate about 60% of all mowers in the world and in Latin America. It's a lot of mowers, followed by Mexico and then Peru. It's a lot of mower we produce. We are a lot of, you know, it's not a very good title, I know, but thanks for this. I have job. I forever, it, this is good. And then I can afford to come here to say, to talk for you about this. Hopefully next year I'll be less nervous and my English is a little bit better. I promise you my English is better than this, but I'm a little bit nervous. And then that's all folks. But wait, wait, the best part I did, please. Ade. <laughs> there is a music, like a uh, succession music. Hold on, hold on. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Someone have a question? Yes. You would like to talk that all loud for everybody? Okay. Hello. If it's basically the same malware, why isn't it caught by antivirus? They just happen, you know, just happen. It's not the same. 
is a little bit different, you know. They have different names, you know. They target different countries, you know. As I say, if it's working, it's working. When it stops to work, they modify a little bit. For this, they keep on going and running and running, just for this. Don't, don't need to start from scratch, you know. They just reuse this a lot. For this works. And cheaper than buy a new one. <laughs> Someone else? They said, uh, I think they're gonna work. <laughs> yo, yo. I louder, know. louder. I know you can speak louder. I, I know you said the, uh, the, uh, the, the desktop attack was the most common one. Yeah. I'm curious to know what's, generally speaking, what's the, uh, the most common um, software that they're using on, on their desktops? Is it like Windows? What? Well, worldwide is Windows because it's cheaper. You can crack this, you can download like for free. So, uh, there is, of course, there are mowers to Mac, to, uh, to Linux. We know this, but it's a little bit rare because not everybody uses. Everybody uses Windows. I have to use Windows sometimes, but I, okay, I have some protections in my computer. And I use Mac, as you see, so, and I don't use Bank here. Yeah, yeah I am bulletproof, baby. No, just kidding. <laughs> No, even the new Windows, you know, because, yes, because everybody use Windows. Most people use like Android phones because it's cheaper than iOS. So there's much more malware to Android than to iOS or Xiaomi or other brands. Just, or, uh, just this. That's easy. I think it's working now. Oh, primero, muy obrigado por pelo discurso bem interessante. Thank you for trying to speak in Portuguese. Thank you a lot. Um, my question is, a lot of the families you went over, you mentioned they had European targets too. So in your opinion, are these Brazilian operators selling the malware overseas or are they just reaching targets because they have similar language, like the victims speak similar languages? What's your opinion? Both, actually both. Some cells, uh, sometimes we don't know which one is, it, it, it's hard to, you know, to spot the exactly person. We know the families because the TTPs are similar, but we don't know who is, you know, behind the smallers. So they sell, and of course, if the language is similar, like to Portugal or to Spain, is easier, or even Italy is not the same language, but Latin languages is easier, you know. But some mowers are targeting like UK, for example, they sell and they, well, I don't know, it's, be, if it's because there's, they sell and they, it's kind of easy, you know, some bank protection. Besides everything I said, we have very good protections in bank in Brazil, you know, one of the first internet uh, bankings, you know, online banks in Brazil start like in 1996, we have very good protections, but of course there are fails, holes there, but, but abroad, uh, especially in the UK here, I don't know, I don't have this vision in the US, but in, in Europe, is they have a lot of fails. So for this, and because this is there, why not? <laughs> Just Obrigada. You're welcome. Someone else? That's it? One, two, okay. So, so <laughs> how effective is Latin American law enforcement? Can um, you repeat louder? How effective are Latin American police in finding some of these? Um, well, we have a very good police trying to, you know, to find these cyber criminals, of course, and everywhere, but uh, our cyber crime policies is not that good. It's good, it's just okay, not good enough. But there are a lot of people working against, like me, for my folks here from Brazil or Latin America, we are trying hard to, but when you arrest some cyber criminal, it's not so easy everywhere in the world. We see like a large uh, ransomware groups being arrested because it's ransomware, you know, a lot of people, a lot of big companies lost money and then it's, you know, they really try to catch these guys, but not the mowers. You know, it's very specific, but yeah, they are good, not the best, well, but they are good. They are not so, I'm not diminishing, diminishing is a word, 
or Brazil or Latin America at all. I'm very proud of, you know, where I live and the the police uh, that try to catch these bad guys and the cybersecurity, we are very good, okay? Really good. <laughs> but, yeah, they're good, but like in everywhere else, it's, sometimes it's hard to Thank detect. You. You're welcome. Oh, I have to stop now, but if you have another quest for a question, please, you can reach me here. I didn't put, as you see, a QR code because no one you would scan, but I promise I can explain better with less pressure what I did. I know sometimes it's hard to understand what I say because I was nervous, but please reach me out or I'll be around here in DEF CON and Black Hat and around if you want to ask something and say my head is beautiful right now. I appreciate. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.